all wars at their core by their nature or immoral because war is savagery it is the expression of inhumanity at an epic level the scientific progress of the last 150 years has steadily increased mankind's ability to kill each other ruthlessly with deadly effect war is irredeemable nobody wins not the people who fight in them not the civilians who will be killed in them but there is a difference between a civilian casualty in a war and murder and there is a difference between an unjust war and a just and necessary war this requires some level of complex thinking to understand because it requires people to hold within them contradictory thoughts and notions and let's be honest this is not a time where complexity is particularly welcomed where nuance is appreciated in this era facts are fungible reality is indistinguishable from delusion but suddenly on the morning of october 7th 2023 the cost of ignoring a threat a society asleep because a government was unprepared was attacked in its sleep hundreds of young people gunned down at a rave babies murdered in their cribs butchered people lit on fire defenseless civilians they were jews and this day october 7th 2023 was the deadliest day for jews since the holocaust ended what we saw was a pogrom a high-tech digital pogrom where the whole world was able to see what was once an occurrence in secret there is precious little archival footage of the executions of the murders of the jews that the nazis did so much to try to cover up and conceal as they retreated backwards squeezed in being defeated crushed by righteous enemies now who bears moral responsibility for the death of millions and millions and millions of germans between 1940 and 1945 who bears moral responsibility for the absolute destruction of dresden and hamburg and dusseldorf and berlin is it the allies was it the united states of america franklin roosevelt did eisenhower and montgomery bear the moral responsibility for the death did hap arnold did jimmy doolittle the responsibility for the inhumanity the deprivations the horror of war do not fall on the people who out of necessity had to fight against extinction that had to fight against the extinction of liberty and freedom to stave off a darkness that would have lasted according to the designs of the evil men who were the architects of the third reich for a thousand years of oppression and misery who bore the moral responsibility for the deaths 
of millions of civilians? The answer were the Nazi criminals, the murderers, in the end, Adolf Hitler. Now let us carry forward this urgent moral proposition to this time and to this place and understand that we are about to see horrible images. We will see death, death from war. We will see house to house fighting in one of the most densely populated areas on earth. We will see precision airstrikes decimate Gaza. It will be turned into rubble because that is what war looks like. And this war has come because of Hamas. And each civilian casualty in the Gaza Strip as a moral proposition weighs absolutely and solely on Hamas and on their Iranian benefactors. Hamas is an evil. Hamas is ISIS. And we must understand the moral repugnancy, the cancer that we are seeing play out across all of the Western democracies. What we're seeing is a public explosion of anti-Semitism and Jew hatred on the far left that has exposed itself as being as equally depraved as the extremist right that tried to topple constitutional democracy in the United States. Let's look at the Black Lives Matter celebration of the murder of babies. Look at this picture from Times Square in New York City, and this one in Sydney, Australia, and these from London. Can you imagine rallies for ISIS? A constituency for cold-blooded murder. And let's understand something. This decay, this rot, the sickness, this disease has a name. Its name is anti-Semitism. And it is alive and well and flourishing. Flourishing on places like Elon Musk's Twitter. The anti-Semitism of this moment must be confronted for the evil that it is. Elie Wiesel talked about this. The opposite of love is not hate, it is indifference. And this is an urgent moral moment because across America's most privileged and elite institutions, we see this cancer. We see depraved young people in the United States cheer it, the murder of babies. And young people, just like them, there is no question that this time of suffering will fall heavily on the Palestinian people. It is a part of their great tragedy, that they have been burdened by such malicious, poisonous leadership, incompetent and corrupt, that among them there has never been a Palestinian who cares about their people more than their power. It is a shame, but understand, Saudi Arabia will spend billions trying to buy off American golfers and yet nothing 
for the humanitarian interests of these Palestinian people. None of these rich Arab countries do. They are their props in a game of geopolitics, abandoned, forlorn, impoverished. And now war has come to them, brought on by a fanatical evil force, funded, trained by, incited by, and working for the Iranian regime who seeks the destruction of Israel and the extermination of the Jewish race as a matter of national policy that they have repeated over and over and over again for 40 years time. It is a rich, powerful nation of tens of millions of people that stands at the precipice of possessing a nuclear weapon. And now the world that we live in has changed and turned again. We have all been endangered by the extremism we have seen in the United States. We have been endangered like the Israeli people were endangered. Their country was paralyzed by a politician who sought power at all costs and any cost, who put himself over and over and over again for a generation ahead of his country, who filled his government with extremists, who incited, who provoked, and divided the country against itself over and over and over again. The warnings from the generals, the warnings from the security experts that the country wasn't ready, that it was vulnerable, that it was being weakened, that its enemies would make an assessment and attack was high. And yet the government slept. In this country, the House of Representatives is not functional, obliterated by the extremists. The American media, deeply corrupted, posits that it was the Democratic Party's responsibility to save the man who saved Trump, who rehabilitated him single-handedly after his incitements to insurrection and the violent mob that came to the Capitol to end American democracy. That man, the American media posits, was deserving in the name of democracy to have the votes of the Democrats. It is all an absurdity. It is all a farce, a carnival of stupidity that in the end, if the American people don't stop it, will kill many of them as it killed many Israelis. The consequences of populism of the demagoguery are profound. And they have touched now on America. There are dead Americans in Israel amongst the dead of many nationalities from this profound evil that must be called by its name. The days ahead will be very hard because the suffering will be broadcast globally. And what will happen is perfectly clear. The world will turn against Israel. The natural gravity of anti-Semitism, which is rooted so deeply in so many democratic societies, will unveil itself. But that is not the majority opinion. The majority of people in the United States and across the world will stand with the Jewish people and will stand with Israel in a fight against evil. But that evil must be called out and the righteousness of the Israeli cause must be defended while at the same time 
the horror of war detested, while at the same time, its necessity understood so that the Jewish people may survive. Israel did not choose this war, but they must finish it. And if they do not, there will be even greater death and even greater suffering. Hamas cannot exist any longer. They have put their military infrastructure in schools, in hospitals, in civilian neighborhoods, because they are indifferent to the lives of their people, indifferent to the Palestinian people who they have held hostage with hate because they would rather seek to kill and destroy Israel than build a better life for anybody. Pray for these people. Pray for the Israeli soldiers. Harden your resolve, but not your hearts. This brutal war that is at hand has been brought forward like wars in the past by a great and menacing evil that must be destroyed with violence. The violence that is coming will be horrible, but it is necessary. And that is the reality in a world that the media has told us is a game show, a reality show where nothing is real and nothing is true. Well, what happened on October 7th was real and it was true. And those dead babies are the proof of that. Never again wasn't just a marketing slogan. It was the most important moral proposition of the back half of the 20th century. And now, as the first quarter of the 21st draws to a close, it seems so many of humanity have lost their memory for an event that still exists within the span of a single human lifetime. Never again. That's what this military action is about. It's what this war is about. The Jewish people will not be exterminated. They will not be forced to be participants in their genocide ever again by taking a lecture that demands of them a tolerance for the appetite of their enemy to extinct them. That such demands are made of them should be understood for what they are as unique and singular and applied to only one people ever, the Jews. Because amongst the broad evidence of anti-Semitism that has suddenly reared its head full force in so many places, so vividly, perhaps the most vivid is the idea that it is the murdered Jew who is to blame for their murder by a bloodthirsty terrorist who kills babies in their cribs. And whatever word is used to describe those savages, fighter, and militant should not be amongst them. It is an obscenity and a perversion of the English language. What happened on October 7th was a crime against humanity, period, full stop. The war that will follow will not be a crime against humanity. It is a necessary war in defense of humanity and that there will be suffering, that there will be horror is the price of war. We should all pray for peace. We should all hope for peace. 
But we should understand that the carnival of stupidity, imbecility, dishonesty, and selfishness that we see play out politically all over the world in the democracies brings the danger close. And in the end, there will always be a threat against liberty and freedom by people who want to take it away. Some of those people, as we've learned in recent years, are domestic enemies. Others are foreign enemies. Israel is surrounded by enemies, and we share a common one in the Islamic Republic of Iran. And now the world has passed through another hinge and grown more dangerous again. Ignoring this is not an option. Confronting it is an urgent moral necessity. We have stupidity reigning in Washington with people like Lindsey Graham exhibiting their ignorance and their prejudice, their bombast, their bloodthirstiness. It's shameful. But understand this. If Israel doesn't win this war and doesn't do what is necessary to defend civilization, then we will have another ISIS and they will come for us.